This is a wonderful topic this morning, uh, the childlike spirit. And it's interesting that it coincides with our uh, Children's Activity Sunday. So I'm happy that those of you who could bring your children uh, were able to do so. You know, Yogananda wrote in the East West Magazine in 1938, he said, all of the great saints and masters that I knew of in India were childlike. He said they all exhibited the divine qualities of a child. You know, sincerity, sweetness, uh, truthfulness, non-attachment, um, universality, you know, loving everybody, um, very frank and confident and sometimes calm and all of these divine qualities. And he said to love children is to love the, some of the best divine qualities of God. And you know, when you think of a very, very good child, a child who's, who's so sweet and sincerely good, he doesn't know of his own goodness. He just is that way. And when we think of great devotees who are completely absorbed in God, they're not aware that they're manifesting divine qualities. They're so absorbed in their in God that they don't even know that what they're exhibiting on the material plane. And even as the child goes along in this world supremely happy and confident and secure in the all protective power of his parents. So the devotee goes through this world, you know, relinquishing fear of things for the future, of things that he should own, because he believes in the all-powerful presence and protection of God, and that God will guide him as he needs to be guided. And Master also says when we come before Divine Mother, before God, we are just like children. We should be like their children. We should pray to them like children. Not that we have to have very defined, intellectual, philosophical prayers, but just pray from your heart as a child. Tolstoy wrote a short story talking about, maybe many of you know it, about three monks that were living on a little island. And this great bishop was you know, on a big ship going in the sea, and somebody said, oh, there's these three monks over there living on that island, and they're you know, they're praying for salvation. And the bishop said, they're all by themselves and they're trying to get salvation. It's like, I'd like to see these monks, so take me there. So the ship goes there and he gets down and he sees these three little monks there. And he says, so oh, I hear you're going for salvation. You know, how are you doing that here by yourself? He said, we're very simple monks. Your Highness, Your Eminence, we're, we're very simple monks. And all we say is, we are three, you are three, meaning, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. This was in Russia, so this is the Russian Orthodox Church. He said, you are three, we are three, have mercy on us. That's our prayer. Otherwise, mostly we're silent, but that's the pray prayer we use. And the bishop said, oh, my children, my children, that you cannot find salvation that way. He said, you have to use the official prayer of the church. It's, you know, our Father, which art in heaven. And let me explain to you all about the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So they're late into the night, the monks can't get the prayer, they can't remember the prayer, but he goes over and over and finally they remember. So the next morning the bishop goes off on the boat and leaves. And as he's leaving, he looks behind and he thinks he sees a boat coming up behind them on the shore, but he realizes, no, it's not a boat, it's these three monks running across the water to him. And they're saying, your eminence, your eminence, I'm so sorry. We woke up in the morning and we forgot the prayer. Please tell me, what was the prayer again we were supposed to be praying? And the bishop said, ah, <laughs> he understood his mistake. It's not the, the official prayers of the church that are going to reach God. It's a very simple prayers of the heart. One of Christ's disciples asked Christ, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Christ brought a little child and put him on his knee. And he said, unless you become changed like this child, and have the, let's <clears throat> see, that's why I wrote it down, so in case I forgot. Whoever, except you change and be as little children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven.
and he said, whoever humbles himself like a little child is same as the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And this is what he taught his disciples. And this type of teaching Yogananda also did with Swami Kriyananda, if you've read The New Path. Uh, one time Swamiji was alone with, with uh, Guruji, and, and Swamiji was a very sincere disciple, but when he first came to Master, he was very intellectual, very philosophical, and Master was always trying to tell him to give devotion and to become more childlike. And so one time he had these toys, and he just shot this little gun, and out came a little army man with a parachute, and it came to the floor. And, and he showed it to Swami, and he said, what do you think? And Swami said, no, it's fine, sir. And, and Master said, you know, except you become like a little child, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And one time, um, one time Christ was in the multitude and he was laying his hands on people and healing them and these little children tried to come up and maybe get blessed also or maybe get healed. But anyway, they were getting in the way and the disciples were pushing the children out of the way. And Christ said, no, let them come. He said, suffer these, suffer the little children to come unto me for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So we have all of these uh, great saints, avatars, telling us, you must become childlike. You must become like children. And what is... On, at the Last Supper, one of the very last acts that Jesus performs with his disciples is that he washes their feet. And of course they were horrified and they felt terrible about it, but he insisted and he washed, washed their feet. And he said, if I wash your feet, then you also wash one another's feet. And what he was saying is that, you, as he had said before, you need to humble yourself but you need to humble yourself and serve and love others. And he's saying, you know, you share with others, you serve with others, you love others, and this is how you will get into the kingdom of heaven. This is how you will find peace. This is my teaching for you. He said it on the last night that he was with them. And, you know, what does the world tell us? The world tells us, no, you need to be boss. You need to be in charge of other people. You know, it's, 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 it's having more money that's going to give you peace or give you happiness or give you ease. But the great avatars are saying something entirely different. We think of, uh, we think of the Hiri Mahashaya going to the Himalayas and finding Babaji there and of course being in ecstasy I think for quite some time and then spending perhaps a week or more with Babaji and his band of chelas there and Nahiri just says, I want to stay here. You know, I know I'm married, I know I have this job, but frankly, I'd like to stay here. And Babaji says, no, you have to go back. You need to share with others. You need to serve others. You need to love others as I have loved you and share Kriya Yoga. And so Lahiri went back to Varanasi and in deep humility taught Kriya Yoga to, you know, housewives, to Muslims, to Hindus, to Christians, to anybody who sincerely asked. And he wouldn't allow anybody to know that he was doing this. They couldn't tell each other. You know, he, they, there were people in Varanasi, they didn't know that, that they were disciples also of Lahiri or they also were doing Kriya Yoga because Lahiri wouldn't let him tell. And then Babaji sees Sri Yukteswar at the Kumbha Mela and he says, you need to share what you know. You know that the truths in the Gita and the truths in the Bible are very similar and you know let's unite east and west and you need to go serve. Sri Yukteswar was married, Babaji was calling him Swami. He said no, your path will be one to share what you know and serve and also to train a disciple to go to the west. And then soon as Yogananda Ji sees this vision of these buildings in the west, he doesn't even wait a day. Within a few hours he's leaving the school knowing he has been called to America to share what he knows, to serve others, to love others. 
and he asked Baba Ji just before he goes, you know, he was so worried about him becoming materialistic and tainted by the West. And he says, will I, you know, will I be able to fulfill my goal? And Baba Ji, says, Baba Ji says, yes, we are sending you. You're the one we chose long ago to go share these teachings in the West. You have our blessing. He couldn't even speak English very well. He's on the boat. He has to give a talk in English. And he just tunes into his guru and says, I don't know how to do this, but you can do it through me. And then Swami Kriyananda goes to Yogananda, and, and Yogananda says to Swamiji, you have a great work to do. And Rajasi told, told Swamiji, and Master will give you the strength to do that work. Swamiji gave his whole life sharing what he knew, serving and loving all of us. And he said to all of us, as we sat you know, in front of him many times, he said, and you are that strength that Master gave me. You are the ones that have to follow through and share what you know and serve others and love others. And this is how it goes. And so then, like humble disciples and childlike, can we say, yes, sir, you know, I will serve. I will love others. I will share what I know. We have to ask ourselves, can we do that? Because that's, what's, that's being childlike doing what our teachers ask us to do, doing what our spiritual parents ask us to do. And we can tune in to their power, their strength, their wisdom, and the more we tune into their consciousness, that energy will just flow to us and give us what we need. And we can be securely confident, just like the little child, that we will be given what we need at the time we need it. And so Yogananda said, those who are loyal disciples tell the end, you know, I will be there when you leave this body. I will be there to carry you across. I will be there to greet you. And so when I think of, of Christ saying, be humble and you can enter the kingdom of heaven, I feel that that's Master saying to us, you know, be humble. Do what we say. Do what I have asked you to do. And I will be there to take you to the kingdom of heaven. And so then also Christ, his last, uh, his last command, commandment that he gave his disciples, he said, love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have this love for one another. So let's become childlike. Let's become humble in everything we do, in our interactions with each other, with our families, at the workplace. Let's be humble and serve others and love others. We can become like the greatest masters of India, the greatest saints of India, if we become childlike and humble. And as we do this, we can all we're doing is actually becoming what we already are. We were born perfect children of God and Divine Mother. So let's act like it. of life, when a baby cries, if his parent 
you know, takes him onto their lap and comforts him, that sense of security can be the first foundation block in their, in their sense of confidence. A new baby comes to us with the wisdom of past lives. It's a fully developed soul. And we're, they've come into our families just as temporary visitors. Swami, Swami Kriyananda said, you have a responsibility to your child to share your experience, perhaps your wisdom, certainly your love and protection. But you have no right to expect them to grow up to be reflections of your personality and ambitions. We need to encourage our child to confidently explore new directions that are far from the family nest. In a simpler age, growing up with one religion, one tradition, it was easy enough for a priest or village elders to set the tone for moral principles, and they were unquestioned. And today our children are faced with so many influences that we have no control of. Of television, of media, of popular music, of other friends. But what we, we can't push out the world, but what we can do is we can compensate. We can strengthen the positive values that we give them so that they become strong enough to face whatever the world has to deliver to them, whatever challenge life throws at them. Yogananda Ji said, self-realization means right meditation, right thinking, and right living. Bring up your children in this philosophy. Don't pamper them or teach them by wrong example to cater to their bodies and harmful desires. Give them true freedom by keeping their lives simple and cultivating in them inner peace and happiness. One of the um, leaders of Education for Life, the movement based on Yogananda Ji's teachings for children, she wrote a book which she entitled, Calm and Compassionate Children. And of course, this is what we all want. In fact, those who are parents may wish that maybe their child were a little calmer and more compassionate at times. But to have calm and compassionate children, we need to be calm and compassionate ourselves. Whether that means taking the time for spiritual practices, for health measures, for friendships, things that nurture our inner peace. And we can't give children only a passive example. We need to actively practice this with our children to bring the message home. An example is uh, what one say, uh, a teacher at an Ananda school, his name was Nitai, he had a, a group of young children in his class. And it was the first day that it started to snow. And all of the children wanted to go out and play in the snow. He declared a special recess, the kids went out, they were happily playing. And then, accidentally, one boy gets pushed down, someone else, a stray snowball lands in his face and then suddenly it seems like all of the children are angry at each other. Nitai called them all back in. They had some calming down period and then they wanted to go out again. And he said, you can go out again if you each promise to cooperate. Of course they did and they did cooperate. Afterward and they were creating castles in the snow together, snowmen together. And they came in and later he asked them, oh, which recess did you like the more, the first or the second? They all said they liked the second. Why? Because we cooperated. 
because we work together. And that message stayed, that lesson stayed with them for a long time. A calm and compassionate child can mean security of family routines and rituals, healthy meals, physical exercise, daily quiet time, time alone, reading aloud from books with moral values, playing calming music in the house, limiting the number of hours of TV or other media, observing the influence of your child's playmates or teachers, and encouraging the most positive of these. It means a child learning to relate to pets and younger children and nature, and it also means you're being more patient with your child, perhaps. You know, perhaps practicing Hong Sa as a child slowly gets out of the car or slowly goes up the steps. And when he misbehaves, instead of reacting, of staying calm and centered as you correct him. And sometimes that correction can be also strong discipline but delivered fairly and kindly, not out of anger. Children who learn to concentrate, to increase their awareness and channel negative emotions into positive, creative outlets, are more mature at handling all the facts that they're taught in school. Swamiji said, children who learn to love, love to learn, they see the whole of life as an education and prepare for it. Once a student that, after some years at an Ananda school, transferred to a different school. And later he compared the two schools. And he said, at the Ananda school, he, was, he had to be responsible for his attitudes. He had to be responsible for how he treated others with kindness and harmony and for his own level of happiness. He had to monitor all this. And he said at the new school, all the, he was so surprised. All they cared about was my grades. Getting good grades, just doing that was so easy. There was nothing to it compared to these more challenging and more important lessons in life. 